I'm Lynette Zhang, Chief Market Analyst here at ITM Trading. We are a complete buy, sell, trade, gold and silver company. And right now, the global economy, I mean, look around. It is undergoing an absolute and complete both social and economic reset. This is specifically what our gold and silver strategies are designed to safeguard you from and make sure that your standard of living remains intact and even expands on the other side of this mess. These videos are specifically designed to help you see the truth of what's really happening because you know my favorite question, how many times can you be lied to when you do not know the truth? And so we're going to do a continuation of the questions that came in that I didn't answer yet. And we're going to start with M88's question. Can they continue the Ponzi with adding and removing zeros at will with digital dollars? Well, it's not so much adding and removing the zeros at will, but yes, as long as the public has confidence in the currency, in the fiat money, they can continue this Ponzi scheme and continue to rob you. But remember that going to the digital dollar is really a great way for them to attack your principal. So you're not going to see this huge fluctuation with adding and eliminating zeros, you know, most likely. It is more that uh, because there's no limitation on how many places you can go past the point, like with a paper standard, it's 1.00. And in the digital world, okay, they can go to however many zeros they want to after that. So this is, so yes, the answer is as long as the public continues to have confidence in the fiat currency, the game can continue, but therein lies the rub because the confidence is going away. And we see that in all of the growing protests that we're seeing, not just nationally, but also globally. We see that in the rise of populism. We see that in the destruction of globalism, that there is a loss of confidence that is occurring. So make no mistake about it. This is the end of this currencies in this game's life cycle. And when you know that the game is over, then you take your best shot at making the most of your ability to transfer wealth. And that's what we're seeing with all of this money printing and this crazy stock markets and all of that. And Merck 01A asks, can you direct us to the section of the banking law that states that the publicly deposited funds are no longer officially ours and the deposit return order if god forbid we have a bail-in or collapse all right let me reread that again okay can i direct this to the section of the banking law and i'm i'm assuming he's talking about the new one banking for all that we just talked about that states that the publicly deposited funds are no longer officially ours no they would not put that in there uh unless you are referring to the bail-in and then that's the one from the Bank for International Settlements. So let me, let me pull that up. That's not in this law that they're pushing right now through the con Congress and the Senate, the Banking for All. That's what is actually legalizing the digital dollar, the digital wallet, and the Fed accounts. It's in the Bank for International Settlement. So I will put that, Megan, and I, I did a piece on that actually. It's been a while, but we'll pull that up and put the link in. Don't forget to do that, you know where it is. So she'll, she'll do that and in that you will see where to go and see where they're not really yours and that they are allowed legally to bail you in. Uh, and let's see, uh, Dexter Day 54 asks, how are metals going to work in the digital Ponzi paradigm? Great question, Dexter Dave. And they work the same way that they work in the fiat money scheme as well, in the debt-based scheme. 
So where I had originally thought that after the other side of the complete reset, when we had the new money, we're not ready for the ultimate, ultimate new money yet. This is still part of keeping us engaged and transferring our wealth, the digital dollar is, but I know that ultimately, yeah, if they can do everything online, they will absolutely like to do that because that gives them direct and immediate uh, control and results. So the way that it would work is you would convert because there's, here's the thing to remember. Gold, physical gold and silver is used across the entire aspect of the global economy. So you can always convert the physical gold and silver into any currency, digital or otherwise, it doesn't matter. So that's how they would work. So whereas I used to think that I would convert the lion's share of my holdings into the new fiat money system, no, no, not going to do it. Uh, some, of course because we're gonna to have to purchase with that. However, I will do it as I need to do it. So that's all part of the strategy that we take a look at when we're creating your specific plan. And you can give our consultants a call. They all have been trained in the strategy and they'll be able to determine how much you need to do that and sustain and expand your standard of living and also to put you in a position to take advantage of the growth opportunities that will then generate income in terms of whatever that new currency is going to look like for the rest of your life. And if this is important to you, uh, the way that you would pass that down to your heirs. You know, it, it really is about dynastic wealth. And dynastic wealth is wealth that lives in families for at least 300 years. And this is the opportunity that we have to grow that kind of wealth right now. But only if you can hold its value and its purchasing power. And, you know, and if everything you hold is inside the system and they're destroying the system, guess what happens to everything you hold? And our blacksmith asks, is this digital currency forever and no more paper? If so, how do you back digital dollars with gold when you hold nothing? Well, what you would, okay, number one, if they have their druthers, yes, it will be a digital system because they want to hold all wealth inside or pretty much all wealth inside of the digital system and they would they could even on real estate for example they could hold the title in digital form and that would enable them to break down that value into itty bitty pieces and then you just get caught up in spending it so uh, yeah the 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 preference is no more paper but you know they've been moving us in that direction honestly since the 50s the 1950s and uh, so how do you back digital dollars with gold when you hold nothing? What you do is you put a component of gold that stabilizes how many digital dollars can be created. And what we're not really quite sure of yet, because we certainly haven't gotten to the other side of it. Right now, those digital dollars are created with the push of a button at the Federal Reserve. So there's nothing at all to back it, not even debt. They don't even have to grow debt in order to do that. And we'll have that universal basic income. But when all confidence is lost and nobody trusts the currency, they will have to put a component of gold in there and then that would fix the amount of digital dollars that can be created. Most likely, or at least this is what history tells us, that will then make people trust the new currency more. And then of course they'll start to change that once everybody gets suckered back in. But you know what, you watch these videos, you are not gonna get suckered back in. And um, really briefly, this came in from one of our consultants 
clients who had this experience. And it was Wells Fargo in trouble, and we know Wells Fargo is in trouble. And he said, when I went to perform my wire transfer, uh, he was buying some gold and silver, I ended up working with the investment banker. He has been wearing many hats as they've closed two neighboring branches and have been very busy. He shared with me that they have suspended all of their business and personal lines of credit most and most of all their lending programs other than mortgages. So even though they are very difficult to get, and that's true, it's getting harder to get them. He told me Wells Fargo is one of the biggest mortgage lenders and they have been hit very hard with the forbearances. Mm -hmm. And they still they are still having to make payments on the loans they have sold. Most all loans under 750 k that they still service. So, so this is like, it's a domino effect, but have no money coming in. He told me that they have extended the forbearance another three months, we've talked about this, but are struggling. And because they are Wells Fargo, they have to be very careful about the way they handle everything because they are so big, they can cause a panic in the economy and with the people. Even though he tried to sell me his services, it was very evident that they're having problems. And he said, we are not in the business of repossessing homes, but most of our customers are not making their payments. And it is very difficult to find out who actually needs the forbearance and who is taking advantage. Don't you remember when we were talking about this, when they first came out with a forbearance and we were told, you know, please be honest, please, if you don't need it, don't take it. You know, it's a joke. They set up these systems without any checks and balances. You know, I'm pretty sure people are going to take advantage of that. But at this point, it would be very difficult to halt the program, yeah, without severe consequences. He went on about COVID and said he had heard that there is urge again for a total shutdown. We are in San Diego, California, and he only expects things to get worse. We'll find out. Also, I noticed something strange when I was at the teller. Someone wanted to cash a check and they said she needed to deposit a portion of it because it had cents and they can't give out change. Well, we know the issue that they've been having with change. When I went in last week and cashed a check for 8,000 and wanted fives and tens, I was grilled with questions. Usually I just say I'm going on vacation and I'm a good tipper. But this time I was made to feel very uncomfortable and actually lied. I was asked, was this money for my business? Why did I need so much money? Why did I need small bills? Where was I going? How long was I going for? Wasn't the coronavirus holding me back from vacationing? I left there feeling violated and horrible because I lied from the start. I should have just said, it's none of your business but I dug myself in a hole of lies by being polite. My son has also been getting small bills from Chase and has been questioned as well. Just thought I would share with you. Now, the reality is, is that our choices have been getting more and more narrow since 2008 when they started passing all of these laws, you know, and put in there the bail-in laws. So while a lot of the restrictions on what banks can do went away, mm, they didn't go away for you and me, depositors. They've gotten more and more and more narrow. But now it's all being tested. So this was one person's experience. I've had some, not as many because it's pretty normal for me to go in it. And Megan, actually, you're the one that typically pulls out the cash. Yeah. What's been your experience when you've gone? They, they do the same thing to me. And I always say, it's none of your business. I, I've always said that because that's what you tell me to say. And I will say that recently, in the last couple months when I made that deposit for you, we got that fee. We've never had a fee on a deposit before, and now we're getting feed to make a deposit. Really? On cash? On the cash. The deposit, the cash. The deposit. And how yes. much was, I didn't even know about this, and how much was the fee? Do you remember? Uh, it was significant. I want to say it was like, it was over a hundred. Really? Was, it was very significant. Yeah. I, wow. I had to call them about it, and they, they said it was a legitimate fee, but, you know, I worked my mess. Yeah, I've never experienced that before, but 
the qu the withdrawing, I, I always just say it's none of your business, and they'll ask me a couple more times, and I'm, I just say it. And they'll ask me, is it for your business? I'm like, it's none of your business. Are you buying a car? It's none of your business. So I just stick with that. Right. So, you know, we can see this, and it makes it even more urgent. I mean, I, I, I don't get it if you don't feel urgent about creating a plan and executing it. We are running out of time quickly. I can't tell you the exact moment that you're gonna lose all choices, but we are losing more and more choices. So at this point, you can still get gold and silver from ITM, but I know for a fact that uh, even choices in there have gotten more narrow lately because all, you remember back in March and April where people were rushing into gold and silver and it got really, really fr frenetic. Well, those people didn't magically decide to sell what was now pulled off the market. Neither do the central banks that have been really, again, frenetically accumulating gold since 2008. So this isn't a new circumstance. This is a continuation. It isn't that was that financial crisis. Now we're going into a new one. We never got out of the old one. It was never fixed. So just say it, you know, it's really important to create. If you don't have a plan yet, then call us and create a plan. It will be, you will be actually executing the same strategy that I'm executing for myself, but tweaked to your goals, your circumstances, and what you have to work with. This week, I'll be talking to Chris Rice over at Rice Crypto, and we have a lot to talk about, especially with the advent of the digital currencies coming into play. And remember, they did put a date on that, January 1st, so we're roughly four and a half months away from that. Next week, I'll be on with Incept Group over in Australia, which is a new entity, so I always, you know, I always like that. It's a lot of fun, because I have no idea what that conversation is going to look like. If you have any questions about this or anything else, just send them to questions at itmtrading.com. Uh, and make sure that you visit our blog, and that's where you find all of the links, all of the in images, and things that I write on the things that we present here, which really look a whole lot different than what you see on these videos. So keep in mind, without any doubt, it is time to cover your assets. And you absolutely do that with the Wealth Shield, which is composed of physical gold, physical silver in your possession. Because we all know if you don't hold it, you don't own it. You will not be holding any digital dollars. You will not be owning any digital dollars. And you will not be controlling any digital dollars. But you can hold and own silver and gold, physical so you can reach us at 888-696-4653. And until tomorrow, please be safe out there. Bye-bye.